What is going on guys? Welcome to another video. So it has been a little bit of time since I put out a video for you guys and that's because I've been quite busy in the garage and with other stuff. So um, let me just give you guys an idea as to what I've been up to. So I've been in school for the last little bit and I'm finishing up my last term uh, this coming April. So I've got another month and a bit until I'm done school, I'll be finishing up all my classes and I'll be done done, which means I'll be able to put out more videos for you guys. Now, on another note, I've also been stupid busy inside the garage. Take a look at my mini. Doesn't quite look as it looked last time. Uh, you guys have seen this thing last. So I had to take the engine out. I took a whole bunch of stuff out because I had to do a lot of service to this car. So let me address, um, let's, do, let's talk about the bigger thing. So when I went to H2O last year, in 2019, I wanted to bring the Mini there and I had a whole bunch of stuff um, on my list of things to do for the car. Now, there was one thing that I wanted to address and that was the rear brakes. When I got around to actually installing them, um, I, well, found an issue. Now, it's a really good thing that I didn't start doing the modifications to the car with the brakes because the brake lines themselves were pretty seized and because of that, one of the lines snapped. So inside the back of the car, I removed literally everything. So the subframe, the brakes, the suspension, you name it, it's all out because I had to do all of the brake lines on the car and that was a very tedious job. So I took the engine out and I replaced all the steel lines with these Nikop lines. Now these are nickel and copper. I replaced the fittings down here on each ends. And the nice thing too is that when you go into the wheel well area, you'll be able to see the nice new brake line that's found right there. So the hard line is found right over top of here. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to get these brake lines right here, the steel OEM ones, and bend the Nikop ones in the exact same way. So I had to buy the fittings for them. I found out there's a difference between regular stainless fittings and steel fittings, and there's also a difference between double flare and uh, bubble flare ends. So each one of those fittings are different. The tools that I use to get this entire job done can be found right here. I bought this brake line straightener. This was a really handy tool to have. This tool right here, this is a bender. I use this to, to go ahead and bend all the brake lines. This right here is the line that I use. This is a Nikop line, nickel and copper mix. Bought this on Amazon. I'll have links to all this stuff in the description box. And I also had to replace the fittings. So the little fittings that you guys see here are what I had to use to get this job done. Now, this right here did not work. What I had to do was I had to get other fittings. The fittings that I had to use were the M10 by 1.0s, these right here, these here are stainless, and I had to buy these ones here. I couldn't find any stainless in the M12 by 1.0, but I got zinc coated ones. So I installed these, these all did the trick, I had to buy 10 and 10, um, it was the only thing that I could find. I couldn't buy OEM mini ones. I looked at the dealership, I called them up, I found the part numbers and everything online. I could buy OEM mini brake lines, but the problem with that is, is that none of the lines were actually pre-bent. So what it was, it's the, the appropriate length line. It had the fitting on one end, fitting on the other end, and once it came in, well, you'd had to bend it, which is essentially the same thing as spending 25 bucks on one of these big rolls. I bought two of them because I didn't know how much I needed, but um, if you guys want to get this job done, you can pretty much buy the same thing, spend $100 max on the tools and products, and you can get the job done. So, with that being said, brake lines are all completed. I wish I took, I, I really wish I did a tutorial or something like that for you guys, but it was very time consuming. I really don't wish you guys have to do brake lines on your car. Now, the second reason why the engine had to come out was because of an engine problem. So, this is my Mini Cooper N14 engine. You can see right here, I have the engine and the transmission assembled. What I had to do was I had to split the transmission from the engine because the seal, the rear main seal that's found between the crankshaft and the transmission, well, that was leaking. So when I sent this engine out to my machine shop to get done, he installed the front main seal and the rear main seal. I sent, them, I sent him all of those products. Now that was a bad call because, well, when I got it back, he installed them, I thought everything looked good, I assembled everything, and well, I found a leak. So what I did was I took the front main seal, rear main seal out, installed new ones, I had to take the transmission off, and I had to put it all back together. So it's just little simple stuff, but it's a huge job just, for, just because of a $10 part, or however much it was. It wasn't expensive, but the engine and transmission have to be separated in order to change it. So then with all the maintenance stuff out of the way, the, the brake lines are pretty much ready to go, the engine is ready to be put back in, now it's time to do the fun stuff, the modifications. Let me show you what I've done. So underneath the car, you can see that the brake lines 
basically go around the entire body of the car. So that's the driver side rear. This one here leading up to this end is the passenger rear. Now, in order to get access to these and take them out, the subframe and the fuel tank need to be dropped. So what I had to do was I had to take, well, all those parts out. And while I took them out, I decided to get to work. So what you see here are the rear trailing arms, the wheel bearings, the brakes, the calipers, the spindle, like everything that you guys see back here all had to come out. The control arms needed to come out, the end links needed to come out, and I decided to refresh all of this while I had it out. So what I did is I bought new mounts right here. These things have a rubber bushing on the inside. My old ones, well, they look pretty crappy, I'm not gonna lie, and they're pretty rusty. So I figured it'd be a good time to swap these things out and replace them. Take note of those two, I'll get back to that in a second. But what I did is for each one of these bushings, I took them out, I replaced them with brand new ones from Mini, and I also installed these PowerFlex bushings. These here basically fill in the little voids inside the bushing to make it a lot more solid. Um, so this is going to be a lot stiffer, and this isn't going to degrade as fast as the old standard rubber bushings. I cleaned all the aluminum that you guys see here for the entire trailing arm, took a little bit of time. I took all the bolts out, for each one of these bushing areas. I took the bolts out, I sandblasted them, and I coated them so they're not going to rust on me. I did the same thing for the passenger side and driver side ones. I took the brakes apart, I installed new brake rotors, I installed EBC Yellow Stuff brake pads. Um, those are installed, those are the bushings. Now, while I figured, while I was doing all this, I also wanted to do some control arm work. So, my car has adjustable control arms for the lower arms in the back of my Mini. Now, I can't exactly do the same thing for the upper ones because of what I have right here. So because my car has projector headlights and they're auto leveling, let me just get to them. The auto leveling headlight part right here needs to know, well, where to auto level it to. So there's two different uh, mechanical parts on the car that tell that where to go. So there's one of them that's going to be found on the front control arm, and that is right here. So this sensor, this guy here tells you where the front control arm is at, and there's also gonna be another one on the rear. So I bought another one. I bought a new one for the rear because the old one didn't exactly look too pretty. Let me just open this up for you. You know, I didn't really need to change it out, but I figured since I've got everything apart, I don't wanna go back and change out a $50 piece later just because I, well, cheaped out for it. So that's, that's the old one right there. It's a little rusty. And I've got some new hardware for it too. So that got changed out. Now, because it has that piece right there on the control arm, I can't replace these two stock arms with aftermarket ones like this. So these ones have spherical end links to it. These ones here, because these are stock, well, you can't do that. So what I did instead is I replaced the bushings that are found inside each side of the control arms with polyurethane ones. I did that for both control arms. I also sandblasted the control arm, painted it, and it looks really good. I'll have a link also for the paint because the paint is really nice, and if you're ever dealing with rust, you literally just spray it on, it converts it to something that isn't going to rust anymore, and then you can paint over top of it or even just leave it as is. Now, you guys tell me, like, it looks pretty damn good if you ask me. You can put a clear coat over top of it to make it look shiny, but I am quite happy with how it is. So that is the adjustable control arm. The stock ones here, these are addressed. Bushings are done. This is the other control arm for the rear. And I figured since I'm gonna be doing all this work, I'm also gonna change out the um, end links for the suspension. So these here are Alta spherical adjustable end links. I've got two of them, one for the uh, one for one side, one for the other. It comes with grease. And I also have the front ones for the front suspension. Now, if you think that that is it, no, we're still not done. Let me show you the other things that I did. So next up is what you guys see here. This is the rear subframe for the Mini. I painted the entire thing. I made it look really good, and it looks a heck of a lot better than how it looked before with all the rust and corrosion on it. Now, what this red bar is right here is a Eibach rear sway bar. If you guys wanna find it, you guys can find a link in the description box. It comes with polyurethane bushings inside of right here. It comes with all the grease that you need, and it's a nice upgrade over the stock stuff. Now, the cool thing about this too is that it's adjustable. So you have two different options, two different spots right here on the actual end of the sway bar where you can put the end link through, and it changes how stiff it is. If you put it through the hole that's closest to the rotating assembly down here, that is gonna be in the stiffer setting. If you move it up into the other one, that's gonna be in the softer setting. Um, I'm gonna play around with that later. But I also bought new cables for the parking brake. So you guys can see the right here. There's the right one. The other one's the left one. I bought new hardware for it too. I'm tired of this stuff all rusting. Welcome to Canada. 
Uh, those are the bolts for the subframe. And I also decided since I'm, going, since I'm going this far, I figured I'd install some chassis bracing components. So these here are from Ultra Racing. So this large one that you see right here, this is the one that goes underneath the car. Uh, it, it's kind of difficult to explain it, but I'll, I'll show you guys exactly where these things go. This one goes right here. So each of the control arms bolt up into these holes. This lines up like that. And the bolts and everything can still be fed through the center. So that's the one. These two go on the sides of the fuel tank. This one goes in the back section, uh, essentially above the muffler. So I have a lot of work ahead of me because I still need to put the subframe in, all these parts in, the cables in. I did a little bit of work on, on the inside of the car to get these cables out. The shifter had to come out. I also put a new shifter in. Um, this all needs to go back in. I have plenty of work ahead of me, but everything's looking good. And also on another note, while I was down here, I also decided I'd paint up the underside of the car and make it look pretty. So there was a little bit of rust down here. I addressed it, I sanded it all down, and it looks pretty damn good. I don't wanna have to address this ever again, so that's why I took my time and got it done right the first time. You guys have no clue how excited I am to be done in school because with it done, I'll be able to focus and put so much more time into YouTube. I know I've been neglecting it. I'm sorry, guys. Um, you gotta bear with me for this next month and a bit. Um, I'm gonna be putting out videos as much as I can, but given that it's coming towards the later part of the year, I've got exams and I've got uh, assignments. So, you know, stick with me. I've got not even two months and I'm done. I'll be able to go full time with this thing. I'm putting a lot of time into the Mini now because I know that last year and the year before and the year before, I didn't really get to enjoy this car much. So it's been on jack stands for most of its life with me um, and I wanna change that. On another note, I also bought another car. I'm gonna be addressing and telling you guys what car I bought. I'm gonna be revealing it soon. Um, but you know, I've been really busy as you guys can tell and I still have a lot more work ahead of me. So this is all just addressing the Mini. Now, as for the Accord build, I have the engine sent out, I have the internal sent out, I have a lot of stuff getting done over there. Um, I have one crucial component down here, this is the cylinder head. Uh, I need to do a little bit of work to that, but I'm going through a lot of stuff um, to get all of that working, let alone the other parts that I have for the Z. So I feel like I have a lot of projects going on at the same time. It's, I don't know if you would call this a good thing or a bad thing, but I feel like it's all over the place. I have all of these parts to go in. Brakes, suspension, exhaust, uh, power, so much stuff. So much stuff. I'm so pumped for it, guys. But again, guys, it's all gonna be in time. I've got other responsibilities I need to focus on, unfortunately, but you know, that's just how it is. Um, month and a half and I'm done. I think April 4th or 3rd or something like that, that is gonna be my last day of school. After that, you guys can expect the constant videos coming out. You guys can expect the summer toys to be coming out and you guys can expect the sub count to just shoot through the roof. We're at 295 right now. I need you guys to smash it for me because we're gonna be absolutely crushing it in this next coming year. Yeah, and this thing's gonna be on the road. I'm so pumped. I put, I, I did a little calculation with it. I put uh, 4,900 kilometers on this thing since owning it. And I've owned this car since 2016. 2016. Yeah, it's been too long. So with that being said, guys, the Mini's getting some more work done. The Accord's gonna get, get some work done. The Z's getting some work done. I've got car parts coming in for it. I have more work to be done more than anything. But thank you guys for your patience. Thank you guys for sticking through me with all this stuff. I've got more stuff to come. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys aren't following me on Instagram, uh, I put a lot of updates on there, especially on my story. So if you guys don't see, let's say a video on YouTube every you know, couple days or whatever, you guys can see constant daily stuff on there and it's found in the description box or it's gonna be right here. It's at Nomast, super easy to find. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thanks for being a part of this. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.